tutorial is for the Happy Handbag from Sewing Patterns by Mrs. H. As you can see, this is quite a nice size bag. On the front, you have these overlays that wrap all the way around the bag to the other side, connecting to your handles. Your handles are double-sided, so one side is one print and the other side is my exterior print or my accent print that I used. And they are put on with these O-rings. Now the pattern doesn't include how to add rivets, I just attached those because I just wanted some extra bling. The bag has this unique teardrop shape on the side here and it's held closed with magnetic snaps and the way those sides tuck in is what gives it its shape here. So if you look at the bag, the way it tucks in is what gives it its shape. When you open the bag, as you see, it's nice and wide. There's a slip pocket here and another slip pocket there. And there is also a zipper pocket on one side of the lining. And you have this really spacious, excuse me, buddy, this really spacious interior big bag. And when you close it, you just tuck those sides back down. So you tuck them, but angle them so they go down. And then you get your shape again of the bag. On the bottom, there are the purse feet, which are great for keeping your bag off the ground or the floor. So say you go out somewhere and you have to put this down, your bag feet will help protect your bag. This is a really great bag for a beginner as there's not a lot of zippers to install, just the one zipper pocket. However, if you want to make this a little bit more customized to your liking and you want to make it a little bit more intricate, you can add another zipper pocket inside the lining. You could even, if you wanted to, add a zipper pocket here. You wouldn't need to use, you wouldn't be able to use these measurements that were given for the interior zipper pocket. You'd have to figure out the measurement here. And as I did, I thought it was a great way to fussy cut and feature a focal print. So have this print fussy cut and centered here. You could do some embroidery, maybe some heat transfer vinyl. And I really like how the whole bag just has these wraparound handles. Again, when we close our bag, we push the sides down into the bag, just like that and snapped it closed. So that is the happy handbag. I'm going to walk you through all the steps of making this bag. And speaking of walking you through, I do film my tutorials as a sew along. So I don't speed up my sewing, the parts where I'm sewing or where I'm clipping and pinning parts. I leave that play. However, feel free to fast forward those parts or skip over those parts if you don't want to watch them. I do give some extra tips and tricks in those parts to make the video a little bit more interesting. And another thing I wanted to mention is that I don't give any measurements or any pattern pieces are shown. There's no ruler shown, no nothing like that. Um, that is shown on camera that is for the protection of the designer and also for the pattern because oftentimes I film tutorials during testing and measurements or pattern piece sizes or things like that can change so this way here my tutorial won't be affected if anything has changed so you will need to have your pattern either printed beside you or open on your computer so you can have it open on one screen and then have the video minimized on another screen so the video can play and you can scroll through your pattern as you're going along so that you can refer to what measurements are, where there's measurements needed, what the seam allowances will be, things like that. So this is again the happy handbag. Let's get started making our bag. So the very first thing you'll want to do is read through the entire pattern. This is very important because each designer gives information regarding seam allowances, different interfacings depending on the materials you're using, etc. So it's very important to read through the entire pattern. It also familiarizes yourself with the pattern and how it's going to be constructed. Once you've read through the entire pattern, you can then go ahead and print your paper templates. Then you can cut them all out and then you can start cutting out your materials. For this tutorial, I decided to use a combination of quilting cotton and faux leather. The faux leather is a bit thinner, so it'll sew just like my quilting cotton would. And I've already interfaced all my pattern pieces as per the instructions in the pattern. So I've interfaced this one and cut the foam out of the seam allowance. I've already gone ahead and marked all my centers on my pattern pieces. So you'll see these here, I've marked the centers top and bottom. I also mark the pattern pieces with the corresponding letter, so this is an A, and I mark a T so I know where the top is. Another thing I've gone ahead and done is I've marked measurements for where zippers and slip pockets need to go, for where magnetic snaps need to go, and I've also cut my zipper to length and made marks on my straps. And this is just for me. You can do this as we approach that step. 
it is given in the instructions at each step, but this is just for me so that when I'm filming the tutorial, it's less of me going off camera or pausing the camera to go and make marks or to go and make measurements. And speaking of marks and measurements, in all my tutorials, I do not give any pattern information or show any pattern pieces, rulers, nothing that'll give away any sizes, and I don't even give seam allowances. So you will need to have your pattern open, either printed on your table next to you or on your computer. So you can just have the video minimized and the pattern open as well, and you can just scroll through the pattern and still be able to see the video. It kind of gives it like a picture in picture view. Another thing I've done is I've gone ahead and got all my hardware together just so that I have it. It's all in one little baggie here. It keeps it right beside me and I'm not trying to fumble for it. So once you have everything all cut, all your markings made, whatever markings you want to make, if you want to wait till you get to each step to make them, that's fine as well. But once you have everything ready to go, we're ready to get sewing. So the very first thing we're going to work on is creating our zipper pocket. So I'm just going to find that piece for where our zipper pocket is. And that's another pattern piece that I've already gone ahead and made my marks on for where that is going to go. You also need your lining piece and the zipper for the zipper pocket. So we'll put those two aside for a moment and on your zipper pocket pattern piece, so the zipper pocket, so that's piece, let me just find it, F. On piece F, you're going to make a mark from the bottom up and you're going to form this little box which is also going to have a line down the center and two little V's on each end. So you'll want to go ahead and refer to the pattern for what the measurements are for that so that you can get that all marked up. Then what we do is we need to place this on our lining panel, right sides together. So I'm just folding this in half to find the center and I'm going to repeat that for my lining. Fold it in half to find the center because we need to center this zipper pocket on this lining panel and again on my lining panel I've marked a T and because I have different lines drawn on my panel I've marked what this is going to be for so with the zipper pocket because we know there's only one zipper pocket being added in this um, bag so now that I have these folded in half I'm now going to take it and line it up with the mark that I made for the zipper pocket and I want to make sure the top is at the top here so it's right sides together but make sure the top so that's why it's important to mark T's so you know where the top and bottom is. So you want the top up here, so sticking up off the top of your main lining panel. Line it up with the line you made, and then we're going to pin it in place. So you can use pins or you can use clips, whatever you prefer for getting this pinned in place. Just like that and once we have that pinned in place we need to sew around this entire box and when you're getting in the corners you want to get right into the corner so you may need to reduce your stitch length to get into the corners and that's okay reduce your stitch length and then stitch another tip to avoid these angled stitches because sometimes angled stitches happen so you get to a corner and you get a stitch like that what I do is I reduce my stitch length to zero I take one stitch right in that corner with my stitch length at zero then I return my stitch length back to the length I usually use and I continue stitching till I get to the next corner. In the next corner, I stop with my needle down, put my stitch length down to zero, take one stitch, return my stitch length back to the length I usually use, and then continue stitching till I get to the next corner and repeat that whole process for each corner. And that just makes sure I don't get any of those little angled stitches in the corner and it helps get nicer corners for your zipper pocket. So we're going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. And I like to start right in a corner. And don't forget to back stitch it, start and stop as well. That's very important. So I'm in that corner. I'm going to reduce my stitch length. I took a stitch. Return my stitch length back to the length I like to use. Turn my fabric back in that corner again. Take one stitch, return my stitch length, 
and then continue stitching. I'm coming up to the next corner. I'm going to repeat that same thing. So in the corner, took one stitch, turn my fabric. Now here I don't need to take one stitch again with my stitch length at zero because this is where I started. So I can just simply back stitch here. I'm not turning my fabrics or anything, so I'm not going to be worried about angled stitches right now because of that. So now we're going to remove our pins. And the next thing we need to do is cut this slit down the center. So we're going to start it with our seam ripper. And I always just start with my seam ripper. I don't rip the whole way. Then taking my scissors, I'm then going to cut to where those V's are. So the tip of the V, then I'm going to go into the corner on an angle. So I'm going to go, here's the V. I'm going to point with this. Here's the tip of the V. I'm going to go into the corner. So on an angle into the corner on each side, both sides of the zipper pocket. So there I am. And being careful not to snip my stitches. However, if you do snip your stitches accidentally, because I've done that many times, there's an easy fix. All you do is re-stitch over where that box, or where those stitches were snipped, should I say. So I'll show you. So say I snipped my stitches in this corner here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start stitching back here a bit. I'll back stitch, then I'll come along, stitch down, do the same thing about taking one stitch in the corner, and then go down and back stitch again. And I'm stitching right on top of those previous stitches. And all that does is it re-stitches that corner, but it also locks in the stitches before and after so that nothing frays on you. And I can check here and I can see I did not snip any stitches. Now I know my, my thread is sort of a light thread because I went with pink because I'm using pink but I didn't snip any of my stitches, but that's where I would check. And you'll see that too, when you're trying to press your zipper pocket through, you'll notice where the, the um, stitches may have been snipped. You'll see that, and you can even fix it even after you've pressed your zipper pocket. So what you see me doing here is just finger pressing my pocket. And I just find this a little bit helpful before I go and push this through to the lining side, to the wrong side. And then once I have that done, I'm going to take this to my iron and I'm going to press this with my iron. So we're going to press this open with our iron. So I'm going to go do that now and come back and we will continue on with making our zipper pocket. All right, so I've gone ahead and pushed my pocket through to the wrong side. So they are wrong sides touching. So now this is how it's looking. Now we need to attach our zipper. So what you're going to do is, oops, there's a little piece of fluff there. What you're going to do is take some double-sided tape and place it above and below this opening here. And that'll help hold your zipper in place. Now, if you don't want to use double-sided tape and you have another method, method that you prefer to use, go ahead and use that method, whatever works for you. There's no right or wrong way in bag making, or any sewing really at all. Whatever you're most comfortable with doing. So just like that, and I'm going to remove the paper backings. And then we're going to center our zipper tape in the opening just like that. So you want to center the teeth in the zipper pocket opening. You want to have it nice and centered. And I try to make it so that my zipper tape is centered as well, but this is a little bit longer, so that's okay. I'm not too worried about it. It's going to be long enough on both sides. So once you're happy with how it is, you may need to shift around, pull it off, put it back down. Once you're happy with how it is, we're going to sew around that box. So first, what I like to do before I start sewing my zipper tape is I like to clip 
my zipper pocket out of the way so that it doesn't end up underneath my needle while I'm stitching. So just like down here, this piece down here, I'm going to pin it down so that it stays nice and flat because there have been times where I've been sewing along and this bottom piece ends up underneath where I'm stitching my zipper in place. So now I'm going to start stitching here, go down, up the side, across the top, and back down. And I'm going to back stitch at start and stop. However, if you're using a material or something where you don't want any back stitch showing, or maybe you just don't like back stitching, what you do is start, don't back stitch, go all the way around, and when you come back to where you started, stop in the same needle hole you started in, leave long tails, both at start and stop, just pull them through to the back and tie them off. And that gets rid of any of the back stitching. When you're going past your zipper pull, just be careful that you don't hit it. You may need to move your zipper pull out of the way. So now I'm just removing all my clips that I had and that's how it looks. So right now the zipper is sewn in place to create our zipper pocket. Next we need to flip this over to the wrong side and bring these zipper pocket pieces down so that the bottom edges meet and the side edges meet. We're going to pin it in place, then we're going to sew each side and the bottoms just a little bit because we want to leave an opening for turning the bag right sides out through later. So we're going to pin it and then sew it. But you're leaving that opening for turning the bag right sides out later. And if you want, you can leave this whole bottom open here to give you a larger turning gap. Or if you feel comfortable being able to turn the bag through, you know, a slightly smaller gap, then you can leave it, so start here, stitch, and then go here. But I'm going to leave the whole bottom open just to give me a little bit more space because sometimes my hands struggle. So sewing this with the seam allowance given in the pattern. making sure I'm moving my lining out of the way. And there we have it. Now we have our zipper pocket created. So you'll see, when you look in, you see a zipper pocket. And if you have a lot of overhang of zipper, you can trim that if you like to be even with the sides of your pockets. I don't, so I'm just going to leave it. So that is our zipper pocket installed on our lining. We're going to move on to creating our slip pocket. For the slip pocket, we need our slip pocket pattern piece. So that is piece, I'm trying to find it on my list, piece G. So we need piece G. And there will be two of these right here. And you will need your linings, however I'm going to leave my linings off to the side for now just so there's not so much on my table distracting us. So for the slip pockets what you need to do is take them and fold them in a half right sides together. Pin it all the way around.
Then what we're going to do is we're going to sew the three sides. However, we need to leave an opening for turning this right sides out. So what you'll do is start and stop back stitch, go and then go across and then up the sides. What I like to do is I like to start off my fabric, stitch up till I hit my seam allowance, and then stitch. And that just helps the, that opening turn a little bit nicer for me. So starting off the edge of my fabric, and stitching until I get to my seam allowance, and I just keep maneuvering and checking. And I like to back stitch in corners as well, just for extra security. Because we are poking out those corners. So there's one side done. Now I'm going to repeat that for the other side of the pocket. off the edge of my fabric, sewed up till I got to my seam allowance, turned, sewed across to the corner, and back up. Now I'm going to cut my corners, and the way Miss H has us do this in the pattern is a little bit different. So what she has you do is she has you baste across the turning gap right here. So she has you baste with long stitches across the turning gap and then steam press the basting and then remove those basting stitches. Then you'll turn it right sides out and you'll turn under that turning gap. And you'll press this with your iron. And that's why I tend to trim down that bulk because this corner is not wanting to turn out really nice. So I'm going to go trim the bulk a little bit more. turning tool I'm just poking out my corners and be gentle when you're poking out your corners you don't want to push your turning tool through them and cause a hole but if you do just turn it back right side wrong sides out and restitch over those corners where you've poked a hole so there's one slip pocket and you can see because of the way I stitched that opening, it forces that to turn under on its own and I can just finger press this. I don't even need to go to my iron really, but I am going to go to my iron because I do want to get this all nice and flat. So I'm going to go press this at my iron. I'm also going to stitch this one the same way. So again, fold it in half, right sides together, clip it in place. Stitch all the way around, back stitching, leaving a gap, and then when you leave your gap, then go back and baste across the turning gap using a long stitch length, steam press the basting stitches, then remove the basting stitches, then you turn it right sides out. Or the method I used, which was stitch off the edge of my fabric, come up to where my seam allowance is, go across, and then back up the sides. So I'm going to go press this with my iron, sew this second one, turn it right sides out, and also press it with my iron. And then we will come back and we will attach these slip pockets to our bag. All right, so I've gone ahead and pressed my slip pockets and I sewed the second one. Now we need to top stitch along the top edge. So for me, I like to top stitch the edge that's been finished when I folded. I just find it's a net lot nicer looking than this edge here that we had the turning gap on. So I put the turning gap at the bottom because when you're looking in the bag, you're not going to see this. And we'll also be stitching that closed when we stitch the pocket to the bag. So I'm going to top stitch both the top edges.
And now we need to pin these to our lining panels. I'm going to start with the zipper pocket panel because you need to take this zipper pocket and fold it up out of the way. We do not want to stitch on top of the zipper pocket at all. So pin it up out of the way, just like that. Then take one of your slip pocket pieces and there's a mark that you need to make in the pattern. So you'll want to refer to that for the measurement for where this slip pocket is placed. Once you have that mark made, you want to center this slip pocket onto your main panel. And to do that is there's a center mark here from when we folded this in half earlier for installing our zipper pocket. I'm going to repeat that for the slip pocket, fold it in half, just give it a nice light pressing, just enough to get the crease, and then center this on your panel, lining it up with the line you made for where the slip pocket is placed up from the bottom edge of the bag, or from the bottom edge of your lining panel, sorry. Pin it in place all the way around, and then once we have this pinned, we will sew the three edges, so down the side, across the bottom, and back up the second side, making sure to back stitch at start and stop. So that's how it looks when it's pinned. I'm going to repeat that for the second lining panel because there's no zipper pocket, so this one's a little bit easier. You just fold the slip pocket in half, line it up with your center line, and with the mark you made, pin it in place, And then we will stitch these down. So back stitch at start and stop. those pivoting stitches in the corners you can do as I was saying with the zipper pocket and stitch one stitch before you turn your fabric one slip pocket. Now I'm going to stitch the second one. now we have the second pocket stitched. We will remove our clips, cut any threads that you see that are loose. And there we go. We have two slip pockets, one on each side of our lining panel, and we have one zipper pocket with a slip pocket in front. Now we're going to continue with constructing our lining. And to do this, we need one of these lining main panel B pieces, and we need our lining base. So your lining base is piece C. So what you're going to do is you're going to pin one long edge to the bottom, so the long edge of the base with the long edge of the lining, bottom long edge of the lining, and it is going to be pretty sides touching. So one long edge of the base with the bottom long edge of the lining. 
pin it in place so I line up my sides and then my centers and then I pin the rest of the way. Next, we're going to sew this lining to the base, leaving a turning gap. So if you want, you can use a pen or something to mark, like your heat erasing pen, to mark where your turning gap is, so you know. Once you have that stitched, you're then going to baste along the turning gap with long stitch length, and then we'll steam press that, and then we will remove the stitches, and this will be the turning gap for the main bag, and we'll sew that later, when we pull it through the zipper pocket. So after we turn the bag, we're going to pull it through the zipper pocket at the bottom and stitch that back closed and we will never see it and you'll never know because the opening that we leave and that we turn under will actually be inside our zipper pocket. So I'm going to stitch this leaving an opening. Oh, my presser foot fell off. Using the seam allowance given in the pattern, you'll stitch that opening, you'll stitch that base to the lining. Back stitch at start and stop. So I didn't sew all the way across. So now there's a little turning gap here. So if you see, I've got the base stuck, but I have a gap here. So now I'm going to baste across that turning gap using a long stitch length all the way across that turning gap. I'm not going to back stitch. because we want to remove those stitches after. So now what I'm going to go do is I'm going to go steam press those. And what that does is that helps make this turning gap so that it'll turn nicer when we turn the bag right sides out. So I'm going to go do that and I will come back. So I've gone ahead and done that. Now I'm going to remove these stitches and I can do that just simply by pulling one of my threads because I did not back stitch. So if I just pull one of my threads, so this is my top thread that I'm pulling but you can pull on the bobbin thread. It just pulls out your stitches just like that. And now you have it marked for where you're stitching later. Now we need to repeat that for the second side, except for the second side, you're going to be sewing along the whole edge of the base. You don't need to leave that turning gap. So again, lining up the sides and the center, and then sew along that entire piece, back stitching at start and stop. So there it is. We've stitched that in place. So now we have what looks like this. Now we're going to match the center of the base. So on here. So if you haven't already, make markings on the center of the base here. So to do that, you can just fold it in half. And then I just finger press down where that center is. And then I'm going to go ahead and mark it so that I don't lose that just because the fold sometimes can come undone. And another thing you can do is you can go and press with your iron this seam open so that you have a nice flat seam here. I'm just going to finger press this open. Can't get my fingers between there. Actually I will use my ruler. I always forget I have this. 
So I'm just going to press that seam open. All right, so there we go. I've pressed those seams open just to help them lay nice and flat. And I've marked the center on my base. Now we need to take the center of the base and line them up with our lining side panels. So it's, or the lining end panels. So it's piece A and we're going to take that center mark and we're going to line it up with the center mark here. Pin it in place. And then the top edge of the lining will line up with the top edge of the end panel. So again, you'll line that up and clip it in place. On both sides, so clip it in place at the top. Line up the top corner of the end panel with the top corner of your lining panel B piece. Line them all up and then we're going to clip the rest of the way around. And I'm going to make sure I put a clip where I press that seam open so that stays nice and open. And another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to snip on my curves just into the seam allowance, not past the seam allowance, just into it. And that'll help open up the fabrics as I'm sewing around the curve, giving me a nicer curve. And I'm going to pin both sides right now, just so that it's done and I can just go right to sewing and I don't have to stop to pin the other side. So with the other side, again, same thing, line up the bottom centers, and the tops, pinning the rest of the way around. Okay, so I'm almost done. Sorry, that took a little bit long. Now we're going to make those snips in the curves and just within the seam allowance, and that'll just help my fabric spread so that it gives me a nicer corner. Again, just within the seam allowance, not any further. So you just really need just little snips. And I go right beside each of my clips. And I go just beyond the curve as well. I don't go right in the curve. I go up the side a little bit where the straight edge is just to make sure. <laughs> there we go. Almost done. There we are. So 
now I'm going to sew this with the seam allowance given in the pattern all the way around. And you'll want to pay special attention because there's instructions for sewing these end panels. It's a little bit different, the seam allowance, so you'll want to pay special attention to that. I'm just making sure everything's going to be as smooth as I can get it. to cut my threads and then repeat that for the second side. And there we have it. We have our lining all complete. And as you can see, it's going to be a pretty big bag inside. So you'll have your lining all done. So now I'm going to um, trim my corner or trim my seam allowances. And I'm going to use my pinking shears to trim them. And this just reduces that bulk in those seams. When we put the bag together, it gives you a cleaner finish. If you don't have pinking shears, you can just trim the seam allowance, then cut little V's along where the curves are, and this will help the curves push out nicely as well. Sorry if that was loud. There we go. Trimmed my seams. My lining looks great. That's how it's looking. So we're going to put this to the side for now. We're done with the lining. We're going to move on with preparing our exterior. For our exteriors, we need our exterior main panel B pieces. So I'm going to grab those. And we also need our base piece. So that is piece C. So we're going to do the same thing we did with the lining, except for we're just going to sew straight across both edges. So we're going to clip the long edge of the base to the bottom long edge of the main panel. And that's why I marked a T on my main panel. I also know where the top and bottom is because I did fussy cut my fabric and I have it directional. So they will be pretty sides together, long edges. 
aligned and then we'll clip it in place and we will sew across this using the seam allowance given in the pattern. For the second side so again lining up the long bottom edge of the main panel B piece with the bottom long edge of the base piece so that's piece C leather for the one seam for the one side so for my base I can't take this to my iron so I'm just finger pressing I'll take my roller try to get that as flat as I can to top stitch on both sides of the seam and there's a measurement given in the pattern for how far away you're going to stitch all right so keeping that seam pressed flat underneath you want to make sure it's flat so I just keep checking as I'm going I just keep making sure that they're flat and they're open on the other side of the base now and again making sure that that is pressed open to repeat that for the other side. Just make sure that you don't have any parts of the exterior under your needle while you're doing this and that this is staying pressed open the seam. So 
that's how it's looking. And I've already made my marks here too, so I'm not too concerned about my marks on the sides. I always like to check that to make sure. Now we need to place the foam stabilizer. So we had foam stabilizer that we cut together with our exterior. So line up that side marking that I checked. Pin it in place. And we're going to sew this in place using the seam allowance given in the pattern all the way down just the sides. So we're not sewing the top here, we're just sewing the two sides. And you'll notice the foam doesn't go all the way to the top, that is correct. Just going to check that mine's the correct measurement. Which it is. want to check to make sure that it is the correct distance from the top to the bottom because she gives a measurement in the pattern for how far down it's going to be and mine's looking like it's not getting centered so I'm going to go and measure and then I'm going to repin so I'm going to do that off camera and I will come back and I'll get this all nicely centered I'm thinking that this center line isn't lining up properly so I need to check to make sure I cut my foam the correct size and then readjust so I will go do that off camera I will come back and we will continue on Okay, so my my lining, um, not my lining, my foam was cut the correct size. I just shifted it when I attached it in the middle here. It shifted a little bit. So now we're all set. I'm going to sew this to the bag or to my exteriors using the seam allowance given in the pattern. And I'm using a longer stitch length for this as well. Turn it up a little bit more. Just because this is a basting stitch, it's just holding the foam in place for us. just yet because we're going to trim this foam down so it's out of the seam allowance. going to take my duckbill scissors and this is where I can trim those threads. <clears throat> I'm just going to trim the bulk or trim the foam down right beside those stitches. Careful not to cut your exterior. That's why I use my duckbill scissors because it puts a piece between so this bill part of the scissors is between the foam and the exterior and it's going right against the exterior so I don't accidentally cut it. So that's one side of the foam trimmed out. Now we're going to trim the other side. If 
you have fusible foam, you can cut your foam smaller. So minus off the seam allowances, and then you can just fuse it in place using the measurements that are given in the pattern for how far down it needs to go as well. There we are. We have cut the foam out of the seam allowance. Now we're going to place this to the side for now. This is our exterior. We'll just fold it in half and place it to the side for now. We're going to sew the handles. For the handles, you'll have two different pieces because they are double-sided handles. So you'll have your two lining and your two exterior. For this, what you need to do is take the lining and exterior handle and place them together, pretty sides touching on the short edges. Just one short edge and if you have your stitch length at a length that you use for top stitching don't forget to return it back to your normal stitch length. So sew that one short edge together. I'm going to just press this seam open. And then you need to draw a line down the center on the wrong sides of the handles, which I've done. So all the way down the length. So I had already done that before. My lines line up. So I'm good right now. I'm just going to add some tape to keep my seam pressed open here. Because it's vinyl, I can't take it to my iron and press it, but I really want to make sure it stays pressed open. Now, once I'm done this, you can take this to your iron if you've used all cotton, and you can press it so those long edges go into the center line. However, I didn't use quilting cotton for the whole thing. I only used, uh, I used vinyl for one, or faux leather for one half, and quilting cotton for the other. So I'm going to place double-sided tape along the long edges right beside the line I made. I should use my thicker double-sided tape for this, then I don't have to use two strips of tape. I'm going to grab my thicker double-sided tape, then I don't have to use as much tape here. double-sided tape. So I'm going to use that down the center. This way here I only have to do the tape once down the center rather than twice. So I'm going to show you how to make this one handle and then I'm going to go off camera and make the second one figure you only need to see how to make the one. It's the same for both. Nothing will change. hold everything. Usually I would move my machine right out of the way to do this. Okay, so I've placed the double-sided tape down the entire length of the strap. Now I'm going to fold this into the center so it meets the center mark 
all the way down the entire length of the strap. And if you've used quilting cotton again, you can just take this right to your iron and press it all the way down. So I'm just pressing the long edges in to meet the center mark. This tape keeps sticking to my nails. Now we'll do that for the other side. matching up that center seam. So make sure this center seam lines up. The seam where you connected your exterior and your lining. So now we need to take two of the O-rings or rectangle rings, whatever hardware you're choosing to use here. So I'm going to grab out my O-rings. to thread the two o-rings onto the handle just like that. Now these ends that you have not sewn together, sorry that's kind of loud, we're going to open them out and we're going to sew those short edges together. Now if you have double-sided tape there you'll want to peel back the double-sided tape so that it doesn't get stuck to the bed of your machine. or stuck to your presser foot, so mine is here, it's ripping off my interfacing. I'm just going to peel it back a little bit. So now making sure your handle is not twisted, put the two short edges right sides together, clip it in place, and then sew across that short edge. And you'll be using the seam allowance given in the pattern. I'm going to do the same thing using double sided tape to press that seam open. Then I will refold back where it was originally folded on those lines uh, to the center. So 
the double-sided tape that I peeled back, I can just pull it off because it's all clumped up now. And I'm just going to use a new piece of double-sided tape. I pulled it off there. When I sew the second one, I'll make sure to not start my double-sided tape until further down. So out to keep it out of the seam allowance so I don't have to pull it back again. making sure nothing is twisted. I'm going to clip these threads that are longer because I don't want them poking out. So we're afraid I don't want them poking out the sides of my handle. to top stitch this ring so all the way around and as we're stitching we're going to move our o-rings out of the way and there's a seam allowance in the pattern that you need to use to top stitch these so you'll want to refer to the pattern for that Once you get back to the end, you can back stitch, or you can do as I mentioned before, leave long tails, pull them through to the back and tie them off so you don't have any back stitching. Now I'm going to stitch the other side of the handle. your threads so now you have a strap that looks like this that's top stitched down both sides now we're going to fold this so the o-rings the seam here is directly under the o-rings and then you will clip the sides so fold it so your O-rings are right there. Another thing you can use is some double-sided tape again in the center, which is what I'm going to do just to make sure everything stays lined up. So I'm going to apply some double-sided tape down the center of my strap, or my handle, sorry. This will just make sure nothing will shift on me while I'm sewing. So 
So again, take an O-ring and put it at each end of the handle, making sure that seam is under the O-ring. Line up the sides. And this is where I do both sides first, where the O-rings are. And then I line up the straight long edges just to make sure everything is nice and neat and all lined up. I'm going to add some clips just to help hold it all in place. And if you're finding that you don't like how it's lined up, like maybe the lining is too far over on the one side because it didn't get lined up nicely, you can go ahead and adjust that now. I find that the double-sided tape really helps hold everything in place for me. So that's how it looks. That's the lining side and that's the exterior side. Now you'll notice I used fabric that is not my lining fabric, but it is the exterior fabric that I used on my um, uh, front of my bag. Sorry, I got lost for words there. So now we're going to top stitch this all the way down both sides and under the, the O-ring. And you're going to go as close to the O-ring, or sorry, there's a measurement in the pattern for where you're going to go to the O-ring. So I'm going to pause the camera, make that mark because there's a measurement of how far away from the O-ring you're going to go. So I'm going to pause the camera, I'm going to go make that mark and come back and again we will stitch down each long side and then across at that mark that we make. Okay, so I've made the marks away from the O-rings here. Now I'm going to top stitch my strap. And again, if you don't want the back stitching showing on your exterior, go ahead and leave long tails and then do not back stitch at start and stop. However, I'm going to back stitch where the O-ring is because I want some extra security up here at this top. And because it's close to my o-ring I didn't switch to a smaller foot I'm going to take that one stitch and I'm just back stitching until I get far enough away that I'm not at my o-ring so that's a way you can prevent that because your o-ring is there your presser foot will sort of jump off it unless you have a humper jumper back up to where I made that line away from the o-ring and I'm going to stitch across and I'm going to back stitch just for some extra security there take one stitch and then because I'm right in the corner here and I realized I wasn't close enough to get my accurate seam allowance I'm going to back stitch just a couple stitches just to get away from the o-ring trim your threads There you go that is how your handle will look with the double stitching down the edges and then the stitching across by the o-ring so i'm going to go off camera i'm going to uh, construct the or assemble the second handle and then i'll come back and we will continue on all right so i've finished both handles now we're going to move on so put those to the side we're going to move on to making our overlays so this is what your overlay will look like and we're going to repeat that same process of bringing the long edges into the center. So I already completed one here already. So I did that while I was finishing that one handle. So using double sided tape or if you're using quilting cotton you can just press this in with your iron. 
but using double-sided tape, place it down the center. And if you're using a thinner double-sided tape like I have, I have one that's thinner than this, you will probably need to use two strips of double-sided tape, one down each side of the center line. So bring the long raw edges in to meet that center line. The same thing we did when we made the handle and going all the way down. Now we're going to bring the other side over to meet the middle, so all the way down. And once this is done, we will then top stitch each long edge using the seam allowance given in the pattern. So we're just top stitching down the sides. We're not top stitching down the short edges, just the sides. You can top stitch the short edges if you want, if that'll make it easier than back stitching at start and stop on both edges. do is break this off and that'll also help prevent um, if you stitch on the other side there's some threads here hang on if you stitch starting back up where you started the last time and you come down and you stitch there that'll help prevent twisting of your strap so starting back up where you started, oops, I keep doing that. I keep wanting to top stitch my regular stitch length or with my regular width. So to prevent that strap from twisting, start back up where you started and go back down and you will be stitching on the wrong side of the strap when you do that and that's okay because your stitching will look the same on either side so again you can top stitch going all the way around you don't have to do the sides but or the short sides but you can if you prefer not to back stitch so many times but if you want to prevent your strap from twi uh, twisting you'll start at one end come all the way down back stitch break your stitches then come back up to the other end and go all the way down again. And that way there you're stitching in the same direction on both sides. your threads and that's how they'll look and if you're using a cotton strap sometimes I find that I still get a bit of twisting even with stitching both ways both directions the same time uh, both sides in the same direction that was a tongue twister apparently for me Sometimes I find my cotton straps still get a little bit of twisting. I don't know why, but it does happen. And all I do is I just iron them and press them flat and leave them cool. And that helps get rid of the twisting. Now we need to attach our handles to our overlays. So what you will do 
is with your first handle, and there is a measurement you need to make on your overlay, so I've already gone ahead and made that one mark on one of my overlays, you'll press the handle or the overlay over the o-ring, so you want the wrong side of the overlay to be pressed to the same side as your lining fabric unless you want your lining fabric out that's totally your choice but so you see this is the right side of my strap and this is the wrong side of my strap so I'm going to put a bit a piece of double-sided tape there to help hold that in place so using that measurement that's where the o-ring is placed at that measurement given in the pattern and I'm just using a piece of double-sided tape to help hold it down <clears throat> you can use clips as well. You'll attach the other o-ring because what we're doing here is we're making a giant ring with all the handles in the overlay. So same thing, slip the o-ring onto the overlay and you'll slip it up to that measurement given in the pattern. So make sure nothing's twisted and everything's laying the correct way. The next overlay, again, making sure nothing's twisted and everything's in the correct direction. have a mark here, or I thought I did. I just want to make sure I'm seeing it correctly. I made a mark with chalk and it's not as easy to see now. There we go. So now I'm going to slip my o-ring onto my hand onto my overlay add some clips just going to check that measurement and I'm going to make a measurement over here off camera on this other one just to make it easier for me to see all right so the final one here will be where you will really need to pay attention to make sure nothing is twisted when you attach it together because it's going to be a big ring but you don't want anything twisted on you. So I'm just putting my double sided tape on for now and then with this all flat So wrong sides or wrong side of the overlay touching the lining side of your handle. Slip it through the o-ring to that mark. Clip it in place. And now you'll see, whoops, you have this big ring. I'm just making sure it's not twisted. You have this big ring right now with two overlays and two handles. So you can see it here, two overlays and two handles and it's not twisted. So you can also use glue to attach the end here of your um, overlay to your o-ring. You'll need to let it dry for a little bit before we actually stitch it. So now we're going to make some marks down on the um, overlay from the o-ring. So I'm going to go off camera and make those marks now because we need to make them before we attach this to our main panel or before we attach this to our main panel. We actually do this as we're stitching but I want to make the marks now before we attach it. So I'm going to go do that and I'll come back and I will show you how to attach these to your main panel. All right, so now I've made the marks away from the O-rings. That's for where I'm going to stop stitching and stitch across at the O-ring. So I've made those marks. 
Now we need to attach this to our main panel. And to do this, it's going to be your overlay that's attached to the main panel, not your handles. And you want to get them centered onto your main panel. So I'm just going to make a mark here on my overlay for where my center is. And I'm going to do it inside. And I'm going to do that on both overlays. Sorry, I had my pen in my mouth for a moment. So both overlays are marked with where the center is. <clears throat> I'm going to apply some double sided tape along the center of my overlay. I'm not going with my tape all the way up to the top of the overlay because you need to remember that we're not stitching all the way up. We're stopping away from the overlay so I just make sure my glue or my double sided tape is not there because you will see it then because that part is not attached. So you don't want to go all the way up to the top. So stay under where that marking is going to be for where we're going to stop stitching and stitch across under the o-ring. So now we need to make sure we have our centers lined up. So I'm going to look and I'm going to go and make a mark with my, I've already marked first where these need to be placed here on the main panel. So you'll want to refer to the directions for that for what the measurements are in from the side and how far apart between each handle overlay. But I also need to mark the center of my base. So I'm going to go do that now. So I'm going to go off camera and go do that and I'll come back. All right, so I've marked the center on my base. Now we're going to attach the overlays to our base. And again, there's those measurements in the pattern that you'll want to refer to for how far over and how far between each overlay will be. So I'm centering the overlay with the center mark I made. And then I'm just following it along all the way up that line that I made. get it to go straight. Then once I'm done this I'm just going to take my ruler and make sure the measurement between each is correct. So I'm going to go off camera and check that measurement first before I continue taping this side. Sorry I keep going off camera but as I mentioned I don't like showing rulers so I just want to make sure this measurement is going to be accurate and then when I place this down it's going to be accurate and any adjustments I need to make I will do that. Alright so as you can see I've got both sides attached and they're taped down with my double sided tape and I pinned my straps and I made sure that it wasn't twisted as I was putting it down. So now we're going to top stitch these straps to our bag and we're going to go all the way down one side across here at the o-ring at that measurement given in the pattern then back down and around to the other side. Now it is easier as it says in the pattern to start in the middle 
work your way up, go around, back down, and stop in the middle. And then you can either start back where you started and go back around and come back and stop here. That's your choice, but it is easier to start in the middle and do one side at a time. If you're doing that starting in the middle, so this is what you'll do, leave long tails, don't back stitch, then we'll pull them through and tie them off. So I'm going to stitch all the way up to that line that I made, or those marks, because that's what they are, they're just marks. <clears throat> and for some extra security here at the top, you can back stitch a couple of times, and I know my kitty's in the way, I'm just going to move her out of the way, watch out babies. And I also did what I've done on other, on the other straps to prevent those angled stitches. Where I took a zero stitch in the corner. So I'm going to do it again. Pivoting my, oh right, the O-ring is there so I can't really pivot it. And I'm not quite far enough away to get the seam allowance I want. There we go. So back stitching here. Just a couple of stitches just to help me get so that my presser foot is not on the O-ring. that o-ring line is take one stitch in the corner before I turn my bag sorry but and I'm going to do the same thing and stitch all the way across and I'm going to back stitch a couple times and this is just for extra security because this is going to be holding the weight of our bag Not quite at the seam allowance. Watch out, buddy. Sorry. Watch out. <laughs> so taking that one extra stitch in the corner, and then I'm just back stitching down a little bit just to help me get past my O ring. Once you're back, oops, once you're back in the hole you started at, pull your long tails and then we'll come to the back and we'll pull them through to the back of the bag. So you leave long stitches or long threads and then we're going to pull them back to the back of the bag and tie them off. And it's a little bit hard to see because of the foam and I used a lighter thread. So they're both pulled back here. Now I'm just going to tie them together and then we'll have no back stitching at all at the bottom of our bag. And I'm just knotting it a few times. There we go. And if you want, you can add some glue to that knot if you're worried about it becoming unstitched. I'm not super concerned, so I'm just going to leave it. So I'm going to go off camera and sew the second side because I don't feel that you need to sit and watch me do that. But again, starting in the center, work your way all the way around, leave long tails when we 
start and then you'll pull them through and tie them off. So I'm going to go sew the other side off camera and come back and we will continue on. All right, so I finished top stitching my overlay and handles onto my main panel. The next step will be to add a bag label if you want one. Now I was going to add one, but I don't want to add it anymore because it's going to come and cover part of my images. So I'm just going to leave that off. I also decided to add some rivets just for some extra decorative purposes. That's not in the pattern. I just placed them where I felt like I liked how they would be placed. So once you have your bag label attached, it is time to make the holes for your bag feet if you are attaching bag feet. So these are my bag feet here that I'm going to be using and I'm going to make holes for where to attach them. So I'm just going to cut little slits for where I'm attaching them or pushing them through. Ooh. And there's a lot of layers to go through here so I'm just being very careful. My seam ripper appears to be broken. So I use the measurements in the pattern for cutting or where these marks are being made. little snips to snip the holes a little bit further. And then you also have holes that you need to make on your bag base. So you can go ahead and do that as well. And the holes as you can see go right through my overlay. I've made those holes now I'm going to make the holes on my bag base and I want to make sure my holes or the slits are going the same direction as they do on my um, main panel overlays I'm gonna have to fix this so just like that oops like that. So I've made the slits using the measurements given in the pattern. So I've done all that. Now we're going to move on and attach our magnetic washers. And there is some measurements you need to use in the pattern for where to place your washers, your magnetic snaps. I'm just grabbing out my rainbow ones, provided I have some. Yes, I do. So I've already gone ahead and made the marks for where I'm placing my washers for my magnetic snaps. And those marks will be where the centers of the snaps will be placed. So using a marking tool, take your washer and place it at that mark and the center of the washer goes right at that mark. So make all the lines for your slits or if you have a different magnetic snap, install them per your manufacturer's instructions. And I've also got a piece of interfacing that I'm going to place behind each magnetic snap. And 
And I always like to cut those in advance just so that it's done and I don't have to worry about it. Sometimes I use a scrap of Peltex, sometimes it's foam, sometimes it's um, Decoville. It just depends on what I've grabbed, but I keep all my little cutoffs of all those types of interfacing just for this purpose. So now that all the slits are marked with our seam ripper, we're going to cut those slits. With my seam ripper being broken, it's making it very hard to use this. Now, if you're worried about when you're ripping your exterior, you can put a pin across the bottom of the slit so that you don't go any further. So you'd put a pin right here. So the slit is at the top here and the line is down here and you could put a pin there. And what happens is your seam ripper will hit that pin and not go any further. I just go very slow. And then as an extra step, I'm going to add some fray stop. Just to prevent any fraying. And we're not going to actually install these just yet. We're going to hold off. So I know I took mine all out of my bag, but I got everything ready. I'm going to put them all back into my bag for now, just so that everything stays together. And now we're going to oops, construct the exterior. So we're going to do the same thing as we did when we attached the end panel to the main panel lining. So we're going to do the same thing. So line up that center mark. Place some clips and then line up the tops. <clears throat> and I'm just going to place a clip here on the top edge as well, just to help hold that while I'm clipping the rest of the way. <clears throat> and when I sew this, I'm going to sew it with my end panel against the bed of the machine and the exterior panel with the base up so I can see what I'm sewing. So now that I've got the tops and the center pinned, that pin is broken, now that I've got this all clipped at the tops and the bottom center, I'm just going to pin the rest of the way around. Just clipping all the way around the curves. I'm going to do the same thing I did with the lining where I clip the curve and make some snips in the curve just within the seam allowance. I don't want to go any further because you don't want to see those snips in your finished bag but that'll help again the fabric spread open as I'm sewing around that curve. But as you can see this fits beautifully. It fits like a glove which helps with making nice sewing of curves when you have all your pieces fitting perfectly together. So now I'm going to pin the other side as well, get that done. Same thing I did, match up the centers. And then the tops. And I'm pinning at the top here 
to hold the top straight edge as well together. Just extra hold. When you're sewing too, you'll want to be careful that you don't get your handles in the way. You don't want to hit them or accidentally sew them underneath in your seam. So just pinning again all the way around. And as you'll see, this is a pretty big bag. which I love. And when I make those snips in the, in the curves, again, I'm just going to go between each one of my clips. There we go. Now it's time to make some snips in our curves, just within the seam allowance, and I'm just going between my clips. All the way around each curve. Some people like to use staples here to help hold their curves, some use double sided tape. Whatever you find easiest to sew your curves, go ahead and do that. Some people hand stitch it first just to get everything all stuck together and then they don't have to worry about anything. If you're sewing with staples, please do be very careful that you don't hit a staple. You don't want to damage your machine or injure yourself. Almost done. There we go. I don't want to run over this clip that went flying, so I'm just going to take out my extension table because that'll help hold my bag up for me. It is a pretty big bag. So again, with the end panel against my bed of my machine, I'm going to sew this using the seam allowance given in the pattern and if your stitch length is returned to or is at a stitch length that you would use for top stitching you'll want to return it back to the stitch length you use for stitching structural seams. sure everything's staying nice and flat as I'm coming around those curves. And my handle is right there so I was making sure it didn't accidentally slip anywhere as I was moving. Even though it's pinned, I've had times where I don't know how it happened but my handle got stuck in my seam. I don't know how, it's still a mystery.
so one side is done. Now we're going to sew the second side. Same way, same thing, stitch all the way around, keeping everything nice and flat. Just check your seams, make sure you're happy with everything. If you have any pleats, now's the time to go back and fix those pleats so you'll unpick a few stitches before and after the pleats. And then after you've unpicked before and after the, the pleats a few stitches, you'll stitch back again the way I was mentioning previously over your stitches to lock them in. Ow, I just hit my finger again. Over the stitches to lock them in. Sorry, I just hit my finger. It really hurts. Anyways, you'll be back stitching over the stitches that you had picked out so that they do not come unstitched. Another thing I'm going to do is trim down my seam allowance here a little bit. And I'm going to use pinking shears. And that's just so that when I turn this bag right sides out, I don't have so much bulk here in this seam. It's really hard with these scissors. we are now we're going to go on to finishing the bag so we're going to grab our lining and we're going to place them right sides together so we're going to place the lining right sides out and I'm going to stand for this because it's a tall bag and I can't really see So I'm going to press these top seams open and I'm just going to use my fingers to press them open. So you can do this where your exterior is right side out and I can't get this one seam open it's fighting me where you can place your exterior right side out and your lining wrong side out 
It's mentioned in the pattern, it's a bit of a harder fit because the lining, but it can be done. However, I always go exterior, wrong side out and lining right side out. These seams at the top are fighting me today. Play nice. And if you have center marks on your end panels, you can line those up as well, and the center marks on your mains. You can get everything all lined up, all the way around. Just make sure everything's nice and even. center marks. Oops. Once we get this all pinned, we're going to stitch the lining to the exterior. Using the seam allowance given in the pattern. But I'm going to grab my extension table for now. all around the top of the bag so we're going to stitch all around the top of the bag here using the seam allowance given in the pattern one of my feet were not out You'll want to back stitch at start and stop. around where those side seams are, make sure you're pressing the seams open or keeping them pressed open on the sides.
bobbin right near the end. So I'm going to go wind my bobbin and then I'll come back and we will continue on with making or finishing our bag. So all we have to do right now is finish stitching then we're going to birth the bag. So turn it right sides out through the opening. So I'm going to go fill my bobbin up and then I'll come back and we will continue on with making our bag. Okay, so I've fixed my bobbin. I've got it all set back up. So that's how it's looking. Now we need to turn the bag right sides out through the opening in the bottom. And this is proving to be very difficult for me because I have my finger that is injured. So I can't really use that hand. waiting because she likes to jump inside my bags when they're finished. Any threads that you see that are sticking out, go ahead and remove them. So now we want to make sure these seam allowances at the top here are open because we're going to press. So we want to make sure that they're open here at the top. And then I'm going to press my seam allowance at the top. Oh, sorry, no, I'm not doing that. Sorry, now I need to move buddy. So now that I've got it turned right sides out, we need to turn the exterior part of the bag down inside the lining. And you can use the measurement, you can grab your ruler and use your ruler to measure to see if it is accurate in what is written in the pattern. But you do want to make sure that the seams are open and you want to make sure that this here is folded down to where the foam is. So you'll feel the foam and that's as far as I fold it down, is down to the foam. And you'll see that you have your exterior showing on the lining of your bag. Once you have that done, I'm going to clip all around just to help hold it in place. You can also press this with your iron. Oops. Just adding some clips to help hold it so that I can get a nice top stitch. And because I don't have a free arm on my machine, I'm actually going to turn my bag so it is lining side out. This way I can top stitch all the way around with no problems. So I'm just turning it lining side out. Try to get it flat. Tuck my handles in. And I will need my extension table again. Using my top stitch length that I like to use for top stitching. 
Just making sure everything is nice and even all the way around. All right, let's top stitch this. And again, if you don't want that back stitching, you can leave long threads, tie them off and pull them through, and then you can weave them through your bag with a needle. My print is busy, so I'm okay with it. That's why I back stitched right where the print is, so that it blends in a bit. So I'm just top stitching all the way around right now. to clip my threads. We're almost done. I'm going to turn this back right side out. You can already see how it's taking shape. Isn't that gorgeous? I love it. I don't normally like bags for myself without snaps, but I'm thinking I really like this one. It's nice and big, lots of space, excellent bag. All right, so now we need to attach our magnetic snaps. So grab out your magnetic snaps and the scrap interfacing. reach through the opening and attach your snaps. So you wanna make sure that you attach male snaps on one side and female snaps on the other side. So both the same halves on one side. So I'm installing my male half right now on this side of the bag. And my interfacing may be a bit too big for right here so after I get this all in I will go back and trim so I can already feel that that's too big so I'll wait until the end so now I need to grab the other male half of the magnetic snap and install that interfacing which doesn't want to go onto the prong. I think it's because there's no slit there really. There we go. One of my 
washers. We'll do that with the other side. So now I'm installing the female portion of the magnetic snap. My washer. Final one. So now I know that those pieces of interfacing are going to be too big and they're going to get in the way of the seam. So I'm just trimming them so that when I turn it, it is not in the way of the seam when I turn the bag back. So I've trimmed it so it stays out of that seam. So I just trim right up beside the washer, but being careful not to catch my lining as I do that. could use your duckbill scissors here just for extra security, which I think I will because I'm getting nervous. to just apply a small piece of duct tape over my prongs, just an extra precaution. And it's just going to be very small because again, I don't want it getting into that seam allowance. And I'm just placing it over my prongs. it just hides those prongs so you don't see them and this is just it'll help hold the prongs in place but it also helps prevent the prongs from rubbing on the fabric and eventually wearing through to the other side there is foam there so it's less likely to happen with the foam however as an extra precaution I like to add it just to be safe need to clean my tape scissors because there's so much tape on them they're not cutting as nicely anymore. I'm going to leave these out to remind me to clean them. Push this back down, just make sure that everything is good. I just put my scissors away, I know I didn't want to, but I don't want to hit them. That's how it's looking so far. It's looking good, I'm super excited. So now we need to add our 
bottom. Our bag base and our purse feet. So again, I have little pieces of interfacing that I have cut for this, but because we're going through the bag base, I'm not going to use that. They're not really needed. So as you can see, I've just pushed one purse foot through and now I'm going to find the slit in the bag base to push it through. And it's a little bit tricky because it's hard to see in the bag. There we go. One's in. And I'm going to open out my prongs. Normally I would fold them into each other, but for this I have them opening out. But I am going to use some duct tape up over them. And I'm just trying to find where the slit was on this panel. And I'm just maneuvering it around with my hand, feeling around. And when I go to press my bag in my final pressing, because I didn't have the bag base that's called for it in the pattern, I used the Decoville Heavy for my bag base. So I'm going to actually fuse this to the bottom of my bag. Alright, so you can see I got all my feet installed. I need to grab back my duct tape. I put it away for nothing. And I'm going to put a piece of tape over each of the purse feet. And I need to stand up because of this bag. I need to stay flat while I do this. There we go. duct tape seems extra sticky today. Maybe it's just because my scissors aren't as clean. Computer. don't want it to stop recording. Okay, final stages of the bag. Now we need to reach through the opening in the bottom of the zipper pocket and grab the base out. So bring your bag base out where that opening is because we're going to stitch that closed. And mine is kind of fraying a little bit, so I'm just going to make sure the frayed edges are sticking out into what would be the wrong side. Normally I'd go and give this a bit of a haircut, but for time purposes I won't. So I'm going to line up the center marks just to make sure everything stays lined up. And I'm going to continue pinning all the way across until I reach the other side where my stitching had stopped previously. And then do that on the second half. So now I'm going to stitch this to close up the bag base.
Just make sure everything is nice and flat underneath your presser foot. And you can see your previous stitching too. You can see the previous stitching holes from when we based it across this opening. Push that back through the zipper pocket. And while the zipper pocket is open, make sure all your edges are pressed out as nicely as you want, or as you can get them. Then we're going to pull the zipper pocket out. And we're going to fold the edges under. And you can hand stitch this closed or machine stitch. I'm choosing to machine stitch. I figure it's in the bottom of a pocket. Nobody really ever sees that. So pinning it all the way across. Now I'm going to stitch this closed. openings in my bag, push my zipper pocket down into the bag and I'm pushing in at the corners too to make sure the corners push in. Alright, close the zipper pocket up, push everything, oops, push everything flat. Now I'm going to clip these closed and now what you need to do is fold each panel these end panels in the center. So find where the center is and fold it in the center and push it down slightly. Oh, I see a thread first here. It's gonna drive me bonkers. Can't get it. So you're going to fold it in the center. So if you fold your panel, you can find the center. And I'm going to add a clip there and what we're doing is we're training this to angle down a bit and over time that'll naturally go that way but it's angled down so I have it angled down into the bag and what you're doing is you're just wanting it to do this so that over time the bag takes the shape that you have it when you pinch the sides going to add a clip here instead. So I'm adding a clip up here instead where the seam of the end panel meets the main panel. That works so much better. Yeah, that works better. So add a clip up there and just leave it clipped in place for a little bit. push it down and as you can see it's forcing it to take its shape. So you can leave that clip on there you know for a few hours or overnight. You may get teeth marks from the clip. What you can do is heat up your ironing board with your iron, a spot on your ironing board, then where those teeth marks are with on the hot spot on your ironing board, take it and run this over or just smooth it over like this so I hold it flat like that against the hot spot and then I just run my hand over it to smooth out any teeth marks and sometimes depending on how deep the teeth mark are you may need to do it a few times but it does work I promise it does get it out even things like if you've stitched somewhere and you had to remove stitching sometimes I find I can do that and get rid of stitching too where I didn't want the stitching to stay 
So there's my bag, all done. I'm going to remove these clips so you can see how it looks. And there's Buddy looking to get in on this. So there we are. We just finished our Happy Handbag by Sewing Patterns by Mrs. H. Has our beautiful double-sided straps with our overlays that go around the bottom. So that kind of feels like it gives a little bit more strength because it wraps around the whole bag. Has magnetic snaps for the top and then we've installed our two slip pockets and our zipper pocket. I hope you enjoyed sewing along with me and maybe picked up a few tips and tricks along the way. Don't forget when you're done making your happy handbag to take pictures and share them on social media using the hashtags given in the pattern so we can all see your beautiful happy handbags that you've made and admire them with you. Once again, thank you for sewing along with me. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye.